So, hey everybody, it's December 18th, 2018, the end of the year. I'm Judy Carter. We have people here with a message of you. And we are today going to be going over homework. People get feedback here at the message of you because um, it's hard to do things alone. I think it's hard to accomplish any goal by yourself. I, it's impossible. So what we're going to do today is we're going to join together. We're going to meet each other. We're going to help each other get our goals together. Because um, if you don't have goals, you're just someone like wishing. And a friend of mine sent me an email today, which I thought was pretty good. It's like, why make a wish, Margo Black, why make a wish when you make a plan? And I find um, part of my life, I like to be spontaneous and do things, but then I will get an idea. I get thousands of ideas, but then I want to, you know, you have to commit to something and then you have to get it done. So be careful what you commit to because sometimes you can like, <laughs> you know, throw away 10 years of your life trying to get something done. So, um, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so welcome here. We have a bunch of people here. Uh, John's our new member. Welcome, John. He's given me some homework, and I want to go go through it uh, with you all. Hi, John. Hey, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Now, now uh, today, Hi, John. what I'm going to do today is um, go through homework. We'll talk about goal setting. I'll have you guys write something, and then we're going to meet up together, and you're going to be able to meet one-on-one -on -one with each other and, and commit. We also have here today uh, Pamela. Pamela, where, where are you here from? A, a place called Ville d'Avray, which is just outside of Paris, France. And it's, uh, there's two forests and lots of birds, and it's beautiful. Oh, fantastic. John, you're right down the street from me. In, um, John, everybody bought a Kindle, and that's why he has no books. Okay, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, where, where are you? I'm north of San Diego. Oh, okay. Oh, we have California. And of course, everybody see the beautiful sunshine. But stay home. We have, we have no housing here. Don't yeah. come. And, and Dutch, where are you come, calling from? Our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., where there's hope every day. More and more hope from Washington, D.C., right? Hope and right? comedy. Hope and a lot of comedy. All right, so let me just go through um, some submissions here. I know, uh, oh, we've got David. Hey, David, how are you? Nice. nice to see you, David. I gave up Toastmasters to be here today. What? <laughs> Great. We'll, make, we'll, we'll, we'll make this a lot of value for you. Um, if you have any homework, you can still email it to me and I'll go through it. Um, right now, I'm going to be going through something that John submitted to me and I'm going to put it up here. So we have from module video two, which is, uh, interesting enough, his commitment. So um, you're going to finish the message of you by a certain date, John? We have, don't have it in. Maybe you didn't say. I'm going to put that in a different one, but um, I'm going to finish module one by uh, the end of December. Fantastic. That's coming up. And when you're done, it would be really awesome for anybody who finishes module one to, to send me a one, no longer than two minute video of them just right into the camera speaking their message. Okay? okay. That'd be awesome. Um, okay, then we have here, um, your speaking goals. Yep. So am I speaking because it's part of my job? Okay. So you've done a lot of unpaid speeches for legal seminars. Yes. And there's, you don't feel there's any um, aware of paid speakers on legal topics, right? Is that what you're saying? Have you researched no. that? Say again? Have you researched that? Uh, they're not, but you, you said you're, you're not interested in getting paid. You're interested in getting a message out there. Well, I'm also interested in getting paid for sure. Okay. Okay. Good. I've well, you might want to research. Paid. Okay. You might want to do a little research and see, you know, what sort of legal I know that I've been speaking to, um, you know, like the insurance groups and the legal groups, uh, but there's tons of chances to do unpaid speeches, but I think I have a different message. Okay, okay. 
Um, and, and what do you consider? You're an expert in law and aviation, but not on the subject to worry, but I believe my experience probably mine will show I've earned the right to speak on the topic. What does that mean? The topic of of getting rid of worry. You know, I went through a bad five year period where, you know, I was paranoid. You know, I didn't have my mentor anymore. And there's mm -hmm. nothing worse than having a six figure income and knowing that you don't have a pl way to replace it. And you got uh, a house and wife and kids. Uh huh. So financial worry is what you're talking about? It was a financial worry and a professional worry. Uh huh. But, you know, Are you I, talking about this redesigning your Act Three for older people? Say again. Are you talking about redesigning your last act in life? Not necessarily. Well, redefining it. What do you mean? Well, there's a lot of people who like to know who've aged out of their jobs and yeah. they, and and retirement is not really an option and they are worried and that's a very interesting demographic for you to approach. Yeah, that might be. Yes. In other words, how to make a living in this part of your life in this age. Have you thought about that? Not really. It's an interesting thought. Yes. Uh, because we always have say, to think of I'm going to talk about worry, but what kind of worry and to what group? Okay? Yes. Okay, and you have a Facebook page and okay. Signed up for LinkedIn, but don't use it. I don't use it. It's just everybody looking for work. <coughs> All right. That looks great. I know, isn't it? It's just like, you know. <laughs> That's funny. It's true. Okay, so your ideal audience. I like to speak to any group or organization with high strength sets of words, including employees, military vets. Do you know, um, uh, anyway, so we have high word, but not men in community. So any group is, we really have to find your niche. Um, we did a webinar um, last week with Frank King, who's actually going to come on board as one of my coaches. On I saw him last week. I saw that. Yeah. So, you know, here he is. He talks on specifically suicide prevention. And, and he, be, he is uh, brand himself as a mental health comic. And so he has this very specific niche. So, you know, it's really good to find your specific niche. And that's what these questions are guided you to find. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, who is your audience? So um, we want to find an audience. And, and you might want to just, and I really like people to gear their message to a real audience. Because a lot of time they do their message and I go, okay, who's your audience? Who are you gonna call? And I go, well, I don't know. So I go, well, go back to video four. Didn't you put down uh, the Chamber of Commerce? Which Chamber of Commerce are you gonna call? So I'd like you to get really specific. Yeah. Because the whole goal here is to like, who in your area, you know, who, ha who hires speaks, uh, speakers where you have a chance of getting in there and then prepare something just for them. Right? Oh, I agree. As I say, I'm still trying to crystallize it. Yeah, well, you're totally on the right track because you're actually doing this. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is totally awesome. And then you gave me, I believe, um, your eulogy, right? Which is yes, here. Yes, I did. And it's a long eulogy. Oh, you didn't say it kind of <laughs> No, I'm impressed. A Renaissance man in very aspects. Okay, this is awesome. Good engineer. I want you to, God, you own two planes. You're a risk taker, aren't you? I think so. I think so. I really like, rather than branding yourself with a neg negative, John, how about branding your message with something like risk taking, risk taking your way to, you know, uh, a new life, right? Because okay. a lot of people think of risk take and then retiring. And then a lot of men die actually when they retire because they don't have a job and they don't know what to do. Oh, you're right. In fact, I know that I talked to a CPA yeah. who went out researching Federal Express pilots to find out what they did after they were forced to retire at age 60. What he found out is that after six months, most of them were dead. John, that's like, that becomes an urgent message. You're saving lives, right? So risk, risk 
uh, risk taking your way to longevity. A lot of people think when you're older, you got to like, take it easy, relax, you know, but it's all about risk taking. So I'd like you to go through this eulogy and highlight things like, highlight, like I would highlight this, you own two planes. <coughs> um, uh, um, who could excel almost anything he put his mind to. I could tell that about you, John. You know, I do this all the time. I say, bring in homework, I'll give you feedback. And people like, eh, maybe next, next week. Mm -hmm. So, so um, and then you went to law school, so you redefined yourself. These are all like really um, amazing things. So go through this and highlight. And, and then you could look at these highlights through this. So he's willing to be, he could fly night, freight nights and go to class during the day. So you're able to meet demands and juggle things and mm -hmm. do a lot, okay? So, um, you know, I love this, watch me. That could even be the title of your talk, right? <clears throat> what, watch me, take care. <clears throat> you know, watch me, maybe not. Exciting mm -hmm. and exhilarating, these are all great adjectives. Anyway, think in terms, not in terms of, I wanted to like shift you as you go through the program, John. Don't mm -hmm. think in terms of worry or burnout. Think okay. in terms of more the results you're going to create for people. You're going to stop people in retiring. You're going to give them a new life, redesigning your life. and and taking risks and taking chances. Because a lot of people, uh, when they get older, they stop taking chances. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and then your techniques could always be like, learn something new. Mm -hmm. you know, every year, what are you gonna learn something new? I mean, that's really changed my life and I can really relate to that because I decided, okay, I'm gonna learn how to snowboard and I'm doing that, right? I'm gonna learn. so. That becomes a really exciting message for you, all right? Now, one thing I do notice though, you know, I'm in a fortunate position where they say, I have social security and I don't have a mortgage, so I don't have to. I can go out and I don't have to make money to pay the rent next month. Ah. You can so pay everybody's gonna be in that position. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Well, as I say, there are a lot of people in the audience that wouldn't relate to that. How do I relate to somebody that's in a position where they've aged out of their job, but they still have... Well, then it becomes like, okay, I have a friend who was a TV producer. Wow. Big, big TV, she's aged out, right? She's aged yeah. out. I can't hear you, and I'm about to hop on the phone. Oops. Somebody's got a microphone. Yes. Okay. All right. So she's aged out, and she's only trying to get what she's done before. And she keeps getting rejected, you know, cause she's aged out of TV, they're agents. Yeah. So it's like, take a risk, try mm -hmm. something new. And I find that when you're broke and I've been in that place, you do anything. And it's like that thing that you do can lead you to something else can lead you. You know, it's like, get on the court of life. Don't yeah. sit on the side. So, you might want to use your airline uh, pilot um, methodology, you know, on that, those terms, soar, yeah. soaring to your new life because of your uh, airline. So anyway, totally on the right track. Awesome. Excuse right, me, Judy, may I interject? Yeah. Hey, John, let me uh, just uh, add my uh, two cents in on that. Um, I'm probably young enough to be your grandson. <laughs> I'm in my job, which doesn't say much. I mean, hey, you know, it is what it is. You know, I just discovered. Now, by the way, David, I'm a Toastmaster as well, so I forgive you. Um, <laughs> I recently took a class at the DC Improv Comedy Club on beginning improv, improv comedy. And I can tell you right now, I have discovered a new passion. I, I, I initially just wanted to uh, take improv as a means of adding extra layers to my speaking, so on and so forth. But man, it is fun. And one of the, the students in my class was an older gentleman 
who had a career. I think he's still working as a as an engineer and lawyer. And he came to improv because he wanted to do something that was completely opposite of the type A corporate world that he that he has worked in for so long. Because those who who are familiar with improv comedy, you know, it's all about stepping outside of your comfort zone. There is no right answer. You just fly by the seat of your pants and it's okay. And for a lot of us taking this class, it has been a great form of therapy. Not only something new to do, but, and I say that to say, you know what, there, there's, there are so many opportunities out here to reinvent yourself, no matter how old you are. Yeah, it's a hot topic. That is excellent, excellent. Yeah, improv is um, awesome techniques for, 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 for life. Um, Thank you for that. I, let me move on because I have uh, two more people sent me stuff and I want to get to Carla. Uh, hey, Carla, nice to see you. Hello. And, you, know, um, you sent me, one second, uh, let me get this going here. Um, what, uh, can you tell me what, um, do you know what video it was from? Eight, uh, module one, video eight. Okay, and, and it was about, what was it about? Uh, you, you go, I speak on the topic of blank from my professional experience. Oh, okay. Okay. So do you want to just read this for us? Go ahead. Go to it. Oh, I'm reading this on my phone. I can't really. Oh, sorry. Okay. You can't see it? No, I, I can't get camera on my phone. Oh, okay. on my, so my professional laptop. experience as an author, a health coach, and a featured guest on Dr. Radio, House Call Radio, and ABC TV. I speak on health and wellness, and I teach people how to be their own health advocate using humor. Um, and then you have, from my professional experience, an author and certified health coach who's appeared on Dr. Radio and having spoken for Alaska Palmolive Care, Lupus Foundation of America, and the myotosis foundation sorry i mispronounced her. i speak on managing living well with chronic illness oh that's interesting um carla i love the chronic illness because it's more of a niche okay do you know what i'm saying um i i'm saying like how um from my per so this is about matching your credibility, um, your your credentials with what you talk about. Um, what what is the book you're author of? How can you not laugh at a time like this? And okay, the well, let's put that in. Reading. From you know, um, you know, as an author of you know um, the book that turns um, that allows people people to laugh at chronic, you know, chronic illness, um, how can you not laugh at a time like this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, I'm also, you know, um, do you know from someone who suffered, putting a little personal, a little personal from life threatening, uh, th uh, threatening illness, I, be I transformed my life by um, becoming a certified health coach, um, helping others and becoming a health expert, um, um, becoming, um, I, oh, I like this, becoming a go-to health expert, you know, appearing, appearing go, go to health expert guest 
on network TV and radio, you know? Okay. And, and speaking for fortune 500 corporations on, 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 you know, um, managing and living well on living on living and laughing your way to health. How's that? Anybody, anybody think I'll read it again, this last part. Anybody have any other way to pump it up? Let me know. From my personal experience as an author of the book that, that allows people to laugh, to allows people to actually laugh at chronic, like, how can you not laugh at a time like this? Um, um, you know, I'm someone who suffered from life-threatening illness um, and I transformed my life by becoming a certified coach, helping others, you know, and, and helping others and becoming a go-to health expert. On, on, this has to be a little massaged grammar, grammar wise. I'm a go-to health expert I'm on radio and speaking for a, on living and laughing your way to health. Okay. What do you That's think? That's great. You like that? Can I put uh, it? I don't think I've spoken for a Fortune 500 company, but uh, well, otherwise. take it out or put you know some kind of speaking at you know corporations or you know something like that. Okay. okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna put that in the chat. Here you go. Oops. Okay. Uh, somehow it's not going into the chat. I'm having trouble with my computer today. Well done, my friend. Well done. Okay. Thank you for the edits. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm. I'll just have to email it to you. It somehow is. One second. I'm got the. I can get it off the YouTube video if if this is going up on there. Yeah, I'll just email it to you. All right. So then I have one more. We got Julia Roberts is in the house. Everybody, Julia, you were here last week, but I I redid your thing. In um, last, last week. week, last week I didn't have my thing in time. I sent it. I know, but I sent, you did something before and was in my box. We we're just playing with it. Okay. Yeah. So I've done it. I've redone it with your, with a lot of your notes. Absolutely. Oh, oh good. Okay. You, yeah. Okay. Do you want to read this and, and everybody, uh, we'll, we can chime in, give her some feedback. Go ahead. So this is what I would, the whole message of you, I think. And it's basically for, I'm going to try and use oh, it. Wait. My uh, people can't see it. I just realized I didn't share. Oh, okay. It. Okay. Hold it one second. My intention is for this to be the backdrop of my speaker reel, like the story thread. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, go ahead. You know how writers feel when they're not writing? Some of my clients use words like failure, fraud, and of course, frustration. And not writing your urgent idea not only deprives the world of your brilliance and you of the royalty checks, but can negatively impact your health as well. Weight gain, too much drinking, anxiety, and stress can result. Yeah. My professional experience as a creativity coach and writer, I've seen the pain and loss people experience when they let their ideas fade without writing, without trying. Yeah. Uh, wait, start again. I'm going to have to mute people. Okay. Uh, one second. Let me just mute a few people because um, I can't hear you. Really well. Sorry. Okay. No, no, it's yeah. not your thing. Okay. Start again. Okay. All people, right. take some notes on your computer or something. See if you have any other, you know, if there's a way you disconnect from it or doesn't feel right, go ahead, Sarah. Uh, go ahead, Julia. Thank you. You know how writers feel when they're not writing? Some of my clients use words like failure, fraud, and of course, frustration. And, now, and not writing your urgent idea not only deprives the world of your brilliance and you of royalty checks, but can negatively impact your health as well. Weight gain, too much drinking, anxiety, and stress can result. From my professional experience as a creativity coach and writer, I've seen the pain and loss people experience when they get, let their ideas fade without writing, without trying. I get it. And I get my clients writing with accountability, community, and encouragement, but also with science. I have my master's in the science of creativity. I use assessment and research effective tools to help my clients get their writing done, build their platforms as they write, and create things that once felt out of reach. I speak on creativity, specifically the creative process and how differently each of us creates and the different ways we can get stuck. Write without the fight is like a magic creativity hack. 
This is a way of looking at creativity that can help anyone refine their vision, get more and more original ideas, keep it going throughout the organizing and writing, and let it go when it's time to put it out in the world. As a lifelong writer, I knew I was creative because I was a highly paid and in-demand brainstormer for companies like Warner Brothers, Nickelodeon, Motown, and American Express. What I couldn't figure out was how I was creative. And even though I have three published books in the world, I was stymied. I needed help understanding why, if I wanted to write, didn't I just write? I believed I was lazy, stupid, or worse, untalented. I was sure it was 100% my fault, but procrastination is not a character flaw. After training with two great coaching mentors and getting my MSc in creativity, I finally realized there is help. People leave my webinar with a sense of power over their age-old problem, writer's block. Instead of calling it procrastination or laziness, they come away with a new name for how they think and what, uh, and right. what gets them stuck and what parts of the process gets them stuck. I used bona fide scientific academic research into creative process and how the brain works to help them pinpoint their own creative thinking skills and not feel bad about their creative black holes. Right Without the Fight is delivered with humor, graphic slides, and personal stories of my own so people can relax and open their minds to something they've been willfully blind to much of their lives, how brilliant they are, and how brilliant they aren't. How they aren't brilliant, I guess. I help writers because I'm a writer, and writers are my people. We entertain, illuminate, empower, inspire, and exercise demons. I think the world needs our unique perspectives to get out of our heads and into the world. That's okay, my. everybody. Claude, yay! Thank you very much. Um, but I'm, yeah. I'm very happy. To okay, hear you um, uh, let me just really quick, and then everybody else, if you have another problem. Here's what I see is relevant, okay? First of all, it's, um, it has to be cut in half. Okay, okay I'm just gonna highlight some things. Let's just see. Uh, I help writers because I am a writer, and writers are my people. Okay, um, um, Okay. this is very important, right? Without the fight, right? We got that. Um, I'm unclear of what you're doing. Are you giving a speech? Are you, are you selling coaching? I have no idea from this. So that has to be clarified, okay? Procrastination okay. is a huge word. It is, yeah. Okay, huge word. Stuck is a huge word. Okay, I'm just going to write some words. Um, um, I love this. It's not a, okay. All right. I like, I like, I like this, but I like it as an act out up front. Okay, so um, okay, so here's my here's my here's my tips. Mm -hmm. It's too removed. You have to go. You know, are you a writer who feels like you? Take out a sweet and make it you. Are you a writer who's not writing? How does that make you feel? A lot of people go, I can't stop procrastinating. I'm just stuck. I don't know what to do. What? Like that. You need to put the voice of the person you're talking to up front. And you need to use the word procrastination, stuck, and block right up front. So I know exactly what you're talking about. There's way too many words. Does that make sense? Yeah, but now I'm worried about like, I'm supposed to be talking to a, a meeting planner versus a writer. Oh, I'm talking to a meeting planner. This is like supposed to be my speaker reel message of you that way. Okay, okay. So, I thought it was for coaching. So apparently I went too far in the uh, professional experience as a coach in that, in that vein. Well, it's, if it's for a group of writers, where do writers meet that a meeting planner would uh, I'm 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 confused. Writing about. conferences, writers conferences. Like I'm speaking this week at, at uh, Sandy. I mean this month at San Diego State College Writers Conference. Oh, for it's a writers conference. Okay. Right. Well, I still think then you can go. Okay, still do it this way. You know, you know, you're going like failure. This I'm this and it and the problem is. You could have a brilliant book and so use you and reality checks. Okay. And then you, uh, this is just fine. Wait, okay. you know, stress, but make it to that person. And then you go, I speak at writing conferences. <laughs> you need mm -hmm. to right away say that right up front. Okay. I coach speakers. I speak at writing conferences on the topic of and write 
without the fight. So that has to go right up front, right? Right, because it's all buried, you know, um, right without the flight, you know? I have a very specific technique that will go right into the results. Refine your vision, get your original ideas, let go of self-doubt, and do what you were born to do. Oh, I do this by, um, you know, and I've done this for such, you know, the Maui's Writer Retreat in San Diego, da da da, writers, you know, um, you know, and I've also worked my professionally at Nickelodeon, this and that and that. And I do this by, um, so you have like, instead of calling procrastinating, I, it's way too long. I get right to it. And I do this by a very scientific design um, uh, approach to the creative process. So do one more rewrite, send it to me, okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll go from there. Thank you. Yeah, but right on target, but you gotta uh, just get a little clearer. Everything is here, yeah. um, but it's a little buried, right? And I have to know, you have to think in terms of the meeting plan or writer's conference, you know, writer's block or busting through writer's block is a kind of something that a lot of people talk about it. So you might want to think what's different about you in t getting past procrastination. Actually, a lot of, I'm almost always the only speaker about the psychological side of writing. They're all, everybody ah, else is talking. Plot, psychological side is like, I'm usually at these conferences, say that. I'm the only speaker on the psychological side of, you know, put that in there. That's gold, Julia. That's gold. Okay. Yeah, really, mostly they're talking about plot or character or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't do the psychological side of writing. I love okay. it. Say that. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Now I'm going to do a new thank share. Thank you. And uh, yeah, well done, my friend. Well done. All right, I have a goal sheet. Let's start filling it in. All right, um, where is it? Uh, here it is. Okay, ready? So, again, um, we all need a plan. If you don't have a plan, chances are you'll get what other people want you to have. But when in your life is a point where you go, this is what I want to do, right? Like, now I, I, I also subscribe to the thing of like, sure, things come your way, you do what other people suggest, it gets you places. Um, but there comes a point in your life where you go, where do I want to be? All right? And I find that's the hardest thing for people to declare. I find when writing stories, I say over and over again, your story, your character has to have desire. What does your character want? Like, and people will just go, well, there I am at home, and then I was here, and then I went here, and then this happened, then this happened. I keep going like, okay, you were at home. What did you want? And there's kind of like a sinking into ourselves and our soul and, and, Admitting and putting it on paper. So let me ask you a couple questions. Ready? Five years from now, what goal would you like to have achieved? Five years from now. Okay. So I want everybody. I'm just just go right for one minute. Um, nobody can see it right now. Just let's do some writing. What do you want to be? five years from now. So right, right, right. And then I'm going to break you up in twos and you're going to share these goals with somebody else. And it's because it's so important to say them out loud to another person. And maybe after um, this webinar is over, you guys will exchange emails and get together, um, get some dates on your calendar to get together with each other. Okay, in five years, I will have achieved this goal. What is it? All right, I'll give you one more minute. And I'll stop talking.
Okay, I'm going to go on. Now, one year from now, I will have achieved this goal. So I want, you know, boy, these years pass so freaking quickly. It's shocking. Um, and then you're dead. Like, you know, who died today? Um, somebody died today. Um, Laverne from Laverne and Shirley died. So, um, you got to get going, people. Um, so, one year from now, what I will have achieved this goal. So, what are you going to achieve one year from now? Let's give you one minute, write that down. Okie doke. Now, the next thing is, in order to achieve my one-year goal, I have to complete five things. All right, so what five things, in order to complete the one-year goal, do you need to do? What do you need to do? What are just five things? It could be small things, it could be big things. Just what do you need to do? Write five of them down. Okie doke. Now, um, okay, so this year, you know, um, like I say, and, and Julia uh, will probably tell you this as well, is just too hard to do by yourself. Right, Julia? Right? Don't you need, you need networking, you need coaching, you need help, you need a buddy to get together with. Um, you need to be, be around people who are doing um, things that you are doing. Um, so you're already doing that because you're in this group, but how will you be more committed to networking? So what are you going to get involved with? You know, what are you going to get involved with here? Um, what do you, what kind of networking are you going to do? Are you going to like make sure you get together with someone maybe twice a month? So I'd like to make this one um, time specific. So, you know, are you going to, um, you, you want to speak to entrepreneurs, you're going to join an entrepreneurial group, or are you going to like, what are you going to do? So make it something time specific. All right. Like how are you going to be networking? You know, I find from, you know, when I was teaching comedy, 
um, a lot of the people who got very successful, they really were out there like connecting to the other comics, getting friends and finding out who's hiring, what's going on. So what are you going to do to get connected? Okay, and then this year, I will have completed these websites or videos, you know, we all need a presence online. <laughs> um, very often, if you need a website, you don't have to have a lot of money. Apparently, you can get something Wix or something and do it yourself or go to your local high school and hire some, some kid to do it. Um, or, you know, and you definitely need kind of video to audition. Uh, Julia Roberts here was talking about how she's going to take it and record her um, message of you statement, add some B-roll to it, sounds great. Uh, what are you gonna complete this year with, you know, your website or video? So write just one minute about that. And finally, by the next Judy Jam in two weeks, you're going to have what done? So write something that you're going to have completed by the next Judy Jam. Oh, okie doke. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now I'm going to um, break you guys up into twos and I'll um, uh, we'll just, I want you to just really talk about your goals to another person. Say them out loud because if they, you say them out loud, they become more real. I'd like you to take this seriously because look at this quote. Um, I don't know, can you see this? Benjamin Franklin famously said, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So um, let's, let's try and uh, see what we can do here. Okay, so I'm going to just hook. And then we have some new people here, I see. So I'm going to, when we come back, I'll let you guys talk. Um, and uh, Just even... to interrupt, can I be with yeah. Carla since we're already speaking buddies? Who, who's that? Uh, David and yeah. Carla, uh, awesome. Um, and then Kath and Dean and Boom and John, Kim, uh, Jan. Um, I'll tell you what, um, and then um, I'm going to open all rooms and Pamela, you stay here and, and we'll talk, talk with me a little more. Okay. So I'll be your buddy and 
go to it. There should be a button, unmute yourself and, and join, join the rooms. All right. Oh. Good, hi. Hi. Yeah, it's just you and me. Let me just broadcast a message. Um, okay, for five minutes. Um, all right, let me just go. Uh, 10 minutes for both of them. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me just set a thing here. Okay, so let's see. What are your goals? Okay, can I just say what um, this time on the clock is fabulous for me because you start at 12 o'clock on the West Coast, right? Yes. Uh, 12, 12. Yeah, 12. Uh -huh. okay. so, tw so it's 9 p.m. here. And then we finish approximately at 10 p.m. This is doable, but when you start at 5 p.m. there, it's 3 a.m. and it totally, I, it's if I'm half full days, it's so I've missed a lot. Is it? Do you like this time? Is this time good for you? 12 noon? Yeah, it's it's you know everybody goes. I get emails going. I can't do 12, so I always have a. Tw I'm gonna always have you know once a month a noon time. You know for people like you, but a lot of people are at work and can't do it. So. Right, right. Okay. You know, it's always, as Gilda Radner said, it's always something, right? It's always <laughs> something. Okay. Anyway, so, okay. Let's, let's, so let's go through your goals. Okay, my goals. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> okay. so in five years, I want to do a theater production in Paris. I want to be on a feature film as a feature actor, lifting up the human spirit because of the character and the acting. I want to have my book published, which is called Wild in the Game, which is my third manuscript. Uh, my one year goal uh, from now on, I will have achieved no more problems with memorization or it will be natural and not torture. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You want to be in a feature film and you want to have your book published and you're going to do a theater piece. And, so, and I, I, the thing is, I, and I, I want to have a photo show with words under the images, a photo show. And a photo show. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a year from now, you're going to be what? Okay. So I, I will have no problems with uh, memorization. I'll be at peace with memorizing. Uh, I will do at least one stage thing in Paris. Uh, I will be a size 10 dress size. I've been a size 12 for a hundred years. So, but um, I, I, I would like to be one size smaller for movement on stage. Um, I will have taken a class on how to mount a photo show. Uh, and Let's see what else. I mean, there's a lot of. So I, a year from now, you still won't have any of your book done, and no, no, I'm writing it. I'm writing it now, and I have reconnected with my writing mentor in LA, and I'm sending her things now, regularly, and then she's sending me comments back. So we're 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 getting started on this. Uh, she's okay. wonderful, and so I, that's. I'm getting a sense about you that you're all over the place, right? And the thing so is, why don't, why don't we just take a five-year goal? Let's just do one. Just one. Because you can do a whole track for everything else. So let's just do one. Five years from now, pick the most important thing to you that's going to be finished. I'm traveling all over the world uh, working with the greatest speakers and peacemakers and, uh, and doing things artistically that supports the message of people getting along in the world. And uh, we are all one on this earth and, um, and there's laughter with it. Okay, so you're going to be speaking so, uh, someplace in five years. Well, Judy, I don't know if I'm gonna be speaking. I, every once in a while <clears throat> with these wonderful peacemakers, they have performers or artists with them. And uh, so I, I kind of see, possibly myself being that 
either opening able a show to create a piece you're not certain what it's going to look like yet but it's going to be on the theme of bringing people together right? yes and particularly enemies and people who kill each other yes okay so one year from now what will you have done towards accomplishing that well okay if you're ready for this um <clears throat> For the first time in uh, the Europeans, which is a bilingual speaking club in Paris, I will do all my speeches in French, and, the, and I'm, it's all out of the comedy book, the okay. human book in Toastmasters, and each one will be in French. And I'm working with wonderful Alain and Odile, who started this club 20 or 30 years ago. So I see I'm going to be working with them uh, an hour every Monday for my okay. French and my comedy. Um. and. Um, for me, comedy is one of the most direct ways to get to the heart and soul of all kinds of different human beings. Okay, so that's good. So one year from now, you will have written that show, right? You keep having me writing a show. <laughs> Why do we have or you're going to have you're going to be performing the show, uh, improvising it. I'm not sure. Well, I, I guess, you know what? I I guess so. I there's something about me that's uh, uh, obviously fighting uh, the the that uh, to say that I'm going to do something by a certain date. Uh, I feel more confident when I say I am a vessel. I'm not originating things and things are going through me and I'm inspired and I just do what the next thing is. And, Okie doke. Okay. And so, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm highly, I'm paranormal with all my senses. I see more than is seen. I hear more that's here. I feel more that's, that's felt. And so that's why I'm a vessel. It's not coming from my ego and it's not coming from my brain. It's just Pamela, coming. Is that something that can be taught? Oh, shit. Excuse my language. You're the second or third person this week has wants me to teach. I can't believe this. <laughs> wants me to teach theater, teach all these kinds of things. Um, is that a thing that can be taught? I haven't, I've never thought of that. I have no idea. Why does everybody want me to be a teacher? I but don't know. I just... Can intuition be taught? Well, of course it can. I mean, there have been great people teaching intuition, um, but it's not that doesn't interest me it interests me uh, to to i mean and a lot of people doing great work with that absolutely great work and we're all we're all wired differently and i i came to peace with how i'm why i mean my father wanted me to be normal and he kept saying can't you be normal can't you be normal and i tried for decades to be normal and i finally said i'm not normal and i still like myself and i might as well be who i am so mm -hmm. um uh so and then i realized we are all wired differently which i appreciate i mean there are different flowers in the fields different trees in the forest and all kinds of things like that so um and there are fabulous teachers in all kinds of things particularly intuition and so forth and so on but there there's something that's calling me for performance um and then i have this crazy story of how um I had a, a dream about a flying clown. My friend was dying, Stevie, and I wrote, a, I made a book in a, with pictures on it in one day. I gave it to her in the hospital. She died, she laughed. She died a few days later and, and something happened with that. And then uh, by an amazing, an amazing, unreal um, movement of things, I ended up as one of the first three women in Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Clown College. And uh, we opened the way for women to become clowns in America. And they kept casting me as the back of a donkey, the back of a horse, the back of oh, all I had was two legs and a tail. And I wanted to have more expression. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to New York. And I heard about Marcel Marceau. I had nothing, I didn't know anything about France. I went to, to the top mind school in New York City. It, I took classes for one week. I Welcome back. So this is what we're going to do. I like, because um, I also want to meet people who I haven't met really yet. Um, everybody just write your five year, what, what you will have accomplished in five years. Can you write it into the chat? So I could just kind of like look at it. All right. So if everybody can just do that to. Uh... Can we do chat? 
Okay. Yeah, do you see where the chat button is? Yeah. No. And then just write it in there. You want five years from now? Yeah, five years from now. your mouse around you'll see a, a, a menu on the bottom okay of the screen and yeah, it'll pop. I could I could do a, a desktop share let's see oh no I guess I can't oh I just lost <laughs> it my chat disappeared sorry. same here sorry, you guys sorry and mine disappeared now it's back it should be back so just back. if if the bottom of the screen roll your mouse over the bottom of the screen you'll see something that says chat well oh, there it is oh no yeah, I'm on an iPad. Hmm. An iPad, huh? All right. Is it participants? No. It says. Um, Let me look at more. Share stop. content. Yeah, if you click on participants. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, keto. All right. Um, Okay, Kyla wants to speak regularly two or four times a month, earning five thousand dollar profit or more per speech, and healthy and happy. That is that is doable. That is very doable. Um, my goal is to speak about Holocaust and immigration. Okay, Victoria, um, that's a topic I hope you can talk about before five years because it's a very important topic right now. And, um, and uh, you know, I always, I always say this to everybody, and this is how I started my career. I got a gig first, then I wrote the speech, <laughs> right? You got to get the gig. So, you know, if, if I was saying I want to talk about immigration, um, I would, I, you know, what do you need to do to do that? You need to uh, just get, get a pitch together, get a, you know, so you can, you know, call somebody, call library the library has speaker programs i should be back all right we i Sarah. tried to pitch i went to a christmas party on sunday uh, i tried to pitch that and uh, i it, it came out so chappy and i need to work more on that <laughs> yeah i work on it when i when i have a phone call I get, i'll do it to everybody hey i gotta pitch something listen to it you know <laughs> yeah um sarah I have published three novels in my uh, series. Three novels, my God, girl. Have that's what I want to do. <laughs> well, that's I'm all. I'm working on number one. Have a movie in the making, giving a TED Talk, and be a keynote speaker. Remind me to talk about the TED Talk thing, okay? In okay, Julia, I built a big online community of writers. Awesome, prominent and beginners who are doing their brilliant work. I meet them writer conference and my online mess class. I also have my funny novel making its way in the world. Oh, you want to have my life? Take my life, Julia, please. please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should ask me questions about that. I could help you with that. Um, okay, about community, bringing people together. Um, I used to do like big events and conferences and get everybody to come. Some of you might have remembered that, but now I'm, I'm a little too tired. Um, John says, uh, five years from now, I've, I will have paid speak engagements two times per month or more. I, John, I see the engineer in you, and I love it because you're so specific. You're, 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 you're number specific, which is awesome, as many of you are, and that's awesome. Two times per month, as I want, with fees of 5000 per gig plus travel. Good. Very useful. I want to have substantial international travel for my speeches. I want to get to the point where we can purchase a home in the south of France with no mortgage. Um, okay, that's awesome. Maybe you can move in with Pamela. Pamela doing theater. Look how, how European she is with uh, the theater. The TRE, very European. I bet you cross your sevens. And films <laughs> that lift up the human spirit and connect us have photo shows, images that connect us, write um, and um, public, publish a book that connects us, <laughs> lifts us, travel the world, 
with Sage People and Work for Sides. I'm starting starting their presentation being with presentations. Um, Roseberry, where's what's your first name? Monica. Monica. Hi, Monica. No, you have your own PBS show on confidence. That is awesome. You might want to look at the career of Loretta LaRoche that <coughs> started. And since Charlie Rose has been fired, you have opportunity. Uh, Kath, uh, for this year, my goal is to write speeches, songs, 25 this year. That is a lot. And personal reflection, giving a pecha. Can you say that? You, who's that? Pachakcha. It's um, there's six minute speeches that are started in Japan and there's Oh right, that's right, that's right. I've heard about that. Awesome, that's a really good goal. And can you swing as cold says in the end the goal three years to give a and with the end goal of three years or earlier to give a TEDx talk. So I have an idea for all of you. Good idea for all of you. All right. Anybody? TEDx. TEDx talk. I'm beginning to believe that the best way to get your message together quickly is to do a TEDx talk. Mm -hmm. And um, so there is a webinar um, available to you on how to apply. And I'm going to show you where it is right now. Um, you go to uh, the message of you, okay? And I have to tell you, this is like the best thing ever because everybody who followed the directions on this got a TEDx talk. And I actually got a TED talk. So you go here, do you see where, I, where you log in? And then it says, my account. So you click on my account. This is, I'm on the message of you.com. Okay, mm -hmm. it's buried because these are public webinars that we later um, use to promote. But we want, the, we, I wanted, I said to my web designer, I need this available to every, all the members. So he put it here. So you, you go to my account and then said, did you miss a Teamway webinar? The message of you. Click here. So if you click here, and let me show you where it is because it's, it's, it's down here. This is all coming in. Let me show you where it is. It's not how to get a TED or TEDx talk. I have to take that out. It's not there. It is turning your stories into TED talks. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Turning your stories into a TED talk. You can just click on that button. It opens it up. Boom, you play it. And Fancy. All right, so there it is. So turning your story into TED Talks. Okay, this is the time now to apply. So it shows you in that webinar um, to apply, and you can go to, you know, just put into Google how, you know, um, TEDx application, and it's bet and and what you want to do apply. No, that's a license. Speaking of TED, about TED, if you go to TED, it's hard to find, but if you go right here in the bottom here and click on TEDx, and then you go um, find an event near you, okay, it's really hard to find, right? So then you could go, let's say you want to find something in New York, and I want to find something in 2019 in New York. Oops. All right. New York. New York, New York. Okay, great. Now, oh, didn't show any. Wait, let's clear that. Well, let's say New York. Let's put New York. Okay. Now it lists these, here they are. There's one January 9th, I'm sure it's booked. Here's New York, Queens, here, here they all are, right? 
so then, then what I suggest is go to this website and you'll see an application. Okay. And let's see if I go away, uh, Rochester. So TEDx Rochester, I go click on here. Um, TEDx Rochester. See, it's really hard to do, but then you go like TEDx Rochester. Like that, num okay. And now it here is, you have, and now here's how you fill it out. Okay. So I think this is really a really good way to get your goals and to apply and get a TEDx talk. And I know David, you did this, right? Yes. Yeah. And now you have your TEDx talk um, online and everything. And how, how did that go for you? I didn't drop the, I juggled. I was a entertainer on it and I, you can go David Cruz TEDx and it'll pop right up if you wanted to see it. David Cruz TED. My name spells C R U Z, by the way. C R U Z. <laughs> I kind of have an aversion to spelling it that way, but that's okay. And, uh, and then you did this in, and how did you apply and everything? Here, here you go. Here's this. I knew the organizer personally. And I went to his, he had a meeting every week for three months, and I kept going. You know, I'm not saying I wore him down or anything. I can't. That's just. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. So I went to their regular meetings, and they talked about various subjects. And I was going to talk about entertainment, and they, then he goes, Don't you juggle? And I go, Yes. And so he goes, why don't you just juggle for us? So I, their theme was reverberation. So I juggled and told my jokes and it's sort of on the same line as your comedy is the best medicine or laughter is the best yeah. medicine. Mm -hmm. So I told my cheesy jokes in the middle and <laughs> did the themes along the side. Yeah. And they had eight cameras. So if, if you were to watch the whole thing, it has except for two shots it talks about or it has good camera angles yeah and it comes across professionally basically yeah so here it's very prestigious and it's very impressive and it looks so great and it's great audio and you know and look how great you look mm -hmm. so that is awesome so you know and here's the thing you apply let's say you don't get in, you keep flying to other places. You know, it's just really good practice to get your message across. Now, what I, if you watch that video that I showed you on turning your stories into TED Talks, it really shows you the formula on how to apply. So I highly suggest you do that. And then new for 2000 and, um, 2019, I'm, I'm bringing somebody else on staff, Frank King. Frank King is doing his fifth TEDx talk, and he's now getting a lot of corporate gigs, and you know he's getting 7,500 a, a corporate gig. He, he talks on suicide, and he's getting corporate gigs with that very emotional topic. So remember, it's not a story that you're selling on TEDx, it's an idea worth sharing. How are you going to contribute to the audience, to their life, and make their life better? So I'll, I'll hang here for a little bit. Any questions anybody has? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this open, and you guys can all chat. You can exchange emails. You can figure out when you're going to get together and work on stuff, and what are you going to work on, and how you're going to help each other. Just remember, um, watch the video first on the TED before you apply. Anybody have any questions? I have one, David, here. Yeah. I didn't realize this till today. If we do the exercise I've been doing with my comedy buddy, who is Carla, by the way. So I, I think John sent his to you. Do we send it just before the Judy Jam if we do the homework online? Yeah, yeah. I'm all about giving feedback. So, um, you know, if you email me anything, I'll pull it up and tell me what, you know, 
what's the name of the exercise and I'll give you some feedback on it. And I think from everything that you do, um, you get closer and closer to the key elements of um, having a message that is sellable. Because at the bottom of the PDF or one of the modules, it said, send to the message of you and I sent it and I, uh, oh, just David, I'm so sorry. Send it to me. I'll give you some feedback. Off. Well, no, I'll send the, the next few here and see. Oh, what okay. Happens. Okay. And when is the next Judy Jam? Just out of curiosity. Uh, the next Judy Jam is, um, let's see, when is it? It is, okay, just go here. And there's, I'm, I'm back on uh, the Judy, uh, this here, and I'm going to go to, um, uh, webinar schedule and it says here that's this so it'll be next year I will see you all on Wednesday at 6 p.m. and then the 22nd at noon okay so we have one trying to make sure everybody has an opportunity if you miss a Judy Jam they are online um, we have a YouTube page where we put them all up all right, so that's when it is. On the 8th, on the 9th at 6 p.m. Pacific time and the 22nd at noon Pacific time. Okay, anybody else? Any other questions? I did actually. So I noticed that you said, you know, this whole idea of like procrastination is not a character flaw. Do you think that becomes a reasonable TED topic? Because yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, I, you know, it's, I, I, I do like it because it's all about, you know, what is the pain? And I find just in terms of, you know, uh, the marketing that I do mm -hmm. is that the word procrastination is very relatable. The other thing you can do, which gives you a big clue, and here's something that I do, is, you know, very often we'll get an idea in our head that a lot of people are suffering from something. And there's something that a lot of people want. When it's just us and our friends. So what I do is I go, um, you know, you can set up an ad, uh, a, a Google ad campaign and it doesn't cost anything. They just, you just have to put your credit card in and then you have access to Google analytic tools. Right. And one of them is a keyword search. So you can see how many people are searching. So it's a very, very um, useful way to really create um, something that'll hit home and hit a lot of people to find who's searching for what. Now, I was thinking women empowerment, would female empowerment be a good thing. Well, guess what? It doesn't even register enough searches to register on Google. So you don't wanna form your whole message and your whole talk around something that nobody wants. Although, mm -hmm. it's good to have a niche market. So you wanna to get to that sweet spot. Like if you go, I'm a motivational speaker, well, it's like billions of people searching and you're never going to be on the first page. But like Frank King says, you know, mental health comic, there is enough searches to warrant having it, but then you become the niche because there's only two other people who are, who are doing that and yet people are searching for it. So you want to get into that really nice market of maybe 300 people a month are searching for it. But the great thing to go for only 200 to 300 people are searching for something is that those people really want you. So if you have some kind of really small niche market, you know, like a, a Denver organic dog groomer, <laughs> you know, maybe it's only 200 searches a month, 100, mm -hmm. searches, but those people really want you. So to me, that's, um, that's better than having such a huge, um, thing that everybody's searching for. You want it to be sort of find that sweet spot. Does that help? Yeah, thanks. Okay, no problem. Anybody else have any other questions or something they're struggling with? Yeah, uh, I, I just checked uh, Judy, Judy Jam at YouTube. Is that it? YouTube? To oh. find older. I mean, oh, 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 oh. Um, uh, it's the message of you. YouTube page. Okay, so if I go to YouTube, that works. I'll send YouTube. you an email. Every Monday you get an email, or you'll probably get this tomorrow. My system puts it up, and you just subscribe to the station when she gives sends you an email. And you know, we send out an email 
you know, announcing the Judy Jams, announcing when a video great. drops, so you'll get it then. Not a problem. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Good. Here, Pamela. Anything else? Um, I'm going to leave you guys. Oh, someone had this something? This is Sarah. I was just going to say, I had emailed you about setting up my half an hour one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Yeah. So should I just email you again about that and see, or did I miss an email reply from you? I might have missed it. Send me again. I didn't see it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll okay. send it again. So. Yeah. So if, if you're an enhanced member, you get a 30-minute private with me. And just uh, uh, email me when you want to take it. And uh, that's not a problem. Okay. Thank you. All right, then. Thank okay, you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go and hey, you guys hang on, be in the chat, um, talk to one another and, uh, and uh, happy new year. Happy, happy holidays. New year. Thank you.